nearly a year ago from now, I went on my first ever poorly planned plane spotting in Berlin airport. It is a wet, cold December day with poor visibility. And it's no wonder that I couldn't get any nice shots, ending the day empty-handed. Since then, I visited more airports and had a lot more of amateur wannabe spotter mishaps. I must learn from these mistakes, so now it's time for you not to repeat them. Welcome to Flight and Fun and let's find out about 10 mistakes that I did that could spoil or spoiled my plane spotting. One quick note here, these tricks will be the most helpful if you are going to spot using public transport, since it's how I was doing it and it's how I am doing it currently. When I was in the Berlin airport for the first time, I went to the wrong end of the runway, so every plane that I could see was already in the cloud. So yeah, don't be me, just get the 80s, read it, listen it, or if you can find it, just go to flight radar and see where the planes land. Now here's the thing. Some airports, which are located mostly in Europe or in the United States, actually like plane spotters. Just look for signs visitor terrace once you're in the airport and you'll get there. I was twice at the visitor terrace, once in Geneva and once in Innsbruck. And both times it was excellent, I could see a lot of different things. Yeah, go find it, it will be fun. Now this is really a game changer, spotterguide.net. I came across this site when I was preparing to go to BER airport for the first time. You can find a lot of different nice places on that site. You can read comments from other spotters about their experience there and find more specific tricks for the chosen airport. It can tell you how to get to the plane spotting areas, the best time of day to use them. It can tell you about danger zones and how not to get detained by police or airport security in those places. Spotter Guide gives each airport rating, so you can also find right away whether it is worth visiting or you just, you'll just spend time and won't get anything in advance. Just a very useful site, in my opinion. Plan for every runway. And if you are planning in advance, keep in mind that takeoff runways may switch with landing runways on the next day, maybe in one minute, who knows. It is quite unpredictable, so find a nice place for every runway. Plan how you can get to another place if the spot isn't that great. Also plan the time during which you'll get to the spotting zone, uh, because uh, going to airport in Munich is one hour just to get to terminal, and two and a half hours to get to the spotting place. It's just the usual thing, so keep in mind that. Don't just choose whatever spot. On Spotter Guide there are a lot of different places, but most of them will be closed for you if you just don't possess the best camera and a ladder. Basically means that if you are without a car, then you have nothing to do there. So yeah, look for the places which are suitable for your own equipment. The spotter guide can also help you with that. You can read recommendations for your camera, for your focal length. It's length between two lenses in your uh, binocular of your camera. And yeah, select carefully. Long walks are inevitable in the airport, let's be honest, because public transport is really cursed there. I remember that to get from one runway to another in Berlin airport, uh, it's 47 minutes by bus and 45 minutes on foot. Like, two minute difference is just kicking in. Yeah, um, bus routes are really weird at the, near the airport, so just count on your foot, just don't go with buses <laughs> and it will be just easier. Also, if you're going in summer, don't forget to bring water because it is must-have. It can be really hot because of all the asphalt that are that is around. I personally like walking, it's just more captivating. <laughs> Bigger the airport, bigger the planes that come in, bigger the excitement. By the way, there are exceptions though. I went to Innsbruck just for the airport, just for landscape that is surrounding it. 
I took a lot of pictures and they came out to be very nice, very beautiful. So yeah, this airport just doesn't need planes in order to be beautiful. But in general, yeah, more planes, uh, it's just more fun. You have more tries to get the perfect capture. Yeah. Start with a good weather, because it's just very unpredictable when you're during the bad weather. As the direction of the wind changes, like, once in 10 minutes runways can change, so you really don't want to stay idle while uh, trucks are cleaning the runway from snow, like 15 minutes. It's just <laughs> not really fun. Yeah, start with nice weather, then just, if you want, you can continue uh, going to the airport when it's like hurricane, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's all for this trick. When I was preparing to go to Munich airport, I noticed that there was an A380 coming from LA. The thing was that I didn't know on which runway it will end up, obviously. I went on Reddit, as you always would do on such occasion, to find how to predict where the plane will actually land, like how to look up at landing history at this airport or whatever. Then I found an advice, pretty straightforward one, I don't know how I didn't get it <laughs> myself. You can just go to flight radar and make notes of patterns in which planes are landing today. If bigger planes like A350 or 787 are landing on a specific runway, then this runway is more likely to become a destination for the bigger plane. In my case, it was an A380, and this trick was successful. I think though that it is also matters from where the plane actually flew most of the time. It won't be landing on the opposite runway from its flight direction. But yeah, anyway, good luck with spotting that A380 or and 747. Yeah, you probably saw that coming. <laughs> I highly recommend you to find a camera for spotting because digital zoom on your phone will make everything look like literal trash. Yeah, I'm just saying that after I brought my Nikon with me for spotting, the quality of pictures that I made literally skyrocketed. I can't overstate how much more quality it brought with it. Now my pictures started looking like professional ones. Anyway, you are here to judge them, so go ahead, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> now that I finished talking about things that I myself tried or things that are closely related to plane spotting, it's time to give you a few pieces of advice on topics that will just make your spotting day even better. Buy an all-day public transport ticket, because it will save you a lot of money. Because you'll need a lot of transportation during that day, I needed to go by tram, then by train, then by bus, and then back in the opposite order when I was getting home. And if you are going by car, read recommendations on where it's safe to leave it. Because you just don't want to end up with a fine when you just wanted to see some planes. And yeah, as everything else, you can find the uh, parking recommendations on spotterguide.net, as always. <laughs> now, this thing I wanted to try, but I can do it without car. So yeah, ladder is a very nice thing, because it can open up for you literally any spot that you want. You just need three, four step ladder and uh, every plane that come in will be in your camera sight. Um, but the one minus is that you'll need to grab it and like replace it when you are going to another place. Also remember to keep away from the fence uh, in order not to trigger uh, airport security. So yeah, be careful with it and the ladder really saves the day <laughs> when you select the bad spots. Okay, so this is all I've learned so far, maybe I'll do a follow-up later, but for now subscribe for more flight sim and aviation content, and join Flight and Find Discord community, and as always, have a great flight to your favorite airport.